Welcome to TNCRadio.live. This is Keep On Talking Live with your host, Tom Kirk. Hey, thank you very much, Tom. Each week here, we gather around the counter of knowledge, even if it may be a virtual one, do a little bit of table trucking and talk about tips, tricks, stories of trucking, and, and really just whatever comes up, issues and things like that. We got a few very simple rules here. Um, Number one, we don't talk politics unless it has directly with trucking. Number two, um, we also do not talk religion. And number three, we try to be nice to each other as much as we can. So some real simple, basic rules there. Tonight's topic was actually submitted by one of our listeners, uh, Judy. Uh, and she suggested that we talk a little bit about cleaning the truck, truck washes, things that work, don't work, places you like, maybe even some of the stories of some of the characters we may have met over the years. So we're going to be doing that tonight. And Judy, if you're listening, you better call on in. And if you want to take part of this conversation, the number is 706 862 uh, That's 706 TNC, TNC zero, or if you're listening to us on the TNC radio app, you can do that one button dialing there for the, for this show. So we're going to be talking to that and we're going to come first to uh, our good friend, Bruce Richards, who calls in from time to time. How are you doing today tonight, Bruce? I'm doing wonderful. That's good Just to hear. I'm taking my break. Hey, hey, don't we all wish we could take more breaks and things like that from time to time? Uh, rumor has it you've been yep. driving for more than one or two weeks. Uh, I think more like three, maybe. Oh, okay, okay. Well, in those three weeks or yeah. so, ha have you? Do you have any stories of the good washes or the bad washes, or maybe a favorite truck wash or one you try to avoid? Uh, okay. When I was on the West Coast, I usually used uh, Little Sisters in California yep. or Tub Wash. And Ooh, I forgot they about did Tub Wash. Really good. Yep. Uh, and they, they, they did a real they really good do. job. Uh, and, and they do, and the, they do. The Little Sisters, or yeah, it was Little Sisters over there on uh, Cherry Street at the uh, Fontana Truck Wash. They used to know me. I was in there maybe once every two weeks. It got to the point where he just hand me the ticket. Would ask me what I wanted, just hand me the ticket. He says, I says, you don't want to know what I do, what I want? He says, you get, every, you get the same thing every time you get here. So here, just go pay the bill. <laughs> and they did a real good job so I try to stay away from blue beacons but it's hard to out here in the midwest east coast but I will I will use them uh, I found a couple off the wall truck washes here and there. There's one in Georgia exit two that does a pretty good job uh, right behind the uh, Flying J. They do a pretty good job and the prices are reasonable. So I, I try to patronize the smaller ones because they seem to do a better job. They want your return business. So... Tom, are you still there? That's what I look for. Yeah, I think we lost Tom for a second. When you say the prices are reasonable, uh, define reasonable. Anywhere between $45 and $55 to wash, wax the truck with a brush, just a tractor. Okay. Uh uh, blue beacons are up there. Yeah, you can you can get up into double triple digits when you really add stuff on. Yeah, yeah. I guess inflation goes up with everything. So, 
Well, am I back? Is, oh, yeah. is my technology working again? You're, you're back now. Hey, perfect. Th thank you for helping out there, Tom. Um, so, so, you know, and, and Bruce, you know, let's 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 call Beacon what most drivers do: the streak and Beacon, because they're 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 the home of the clean trucks with all the streaks on them. Yep. So, yep. but yeah, and we can maybe later on in the show get into some of the reasons why that does. Before I bring on uh, another caller here, uh, do you have a favorite tip or trick that you like to do to try to keep your uh, truck clean, whether it's inside or outside, to make your life a little bit easier? I try to keep the outside washed and waxed. Uh, at least once every two weeks, depending on the weather. Uh, inside, I just wipe them down, wipe everything down with Clorox wipes. And then I go over it with a uh, like an Armor All or something for the in interior. And uh, I got a cordless vacuum that I use. Okay. And a uh, Swifter. That's like actually a good idea that I hadn't thought of. Hop dust. Yes. Like going out to eat. Every driver's got the same a lot of problems with dry and dry skin. Oh, yeah. And you can see that. Yeah. It helps exactly. with that. Uh, and that makes sense. So, hey, what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to leave you on, but we're going to bring in Jess Graham here real quick for a few minutes. How are you doing tonight, Jess? Uh, I am fabulous. Well, I of just course figured you I are. hadn't called in a while. So. Well, hey, we always appreciate it. I mean, one of our originals, so we always appreciate it when you call in. Uh, yeah, I even actually I wrote a song about you tonight. So, um. well, well, it would it wouldn't be you if you didn't give me a hard time. So, um, you know, Jess, you've heard a little bit about the t the topic here tonight. Do you have a favorite truck wash? Oh, I'm always Pride, the Pride Truck Stop chain across in the Midwest. Uh, my favorite one is not Phil because they actually call my truck by name. Um, they don't call me by name. They're like that lady that drives the Black Widow. Um, but I'll take that. They know my that truck works. name. You know, and they take extra time and, and they actually do a hand dry on it, which I like. And that is something that you don't, I mean, you see it sometimes in the southern states, but you don't really see it as much in like in the Midwest or the Northeast, uh, the, the places that still do the hand dries. And that is a nice touch. You know, if, if when you're paying that kind of money for a really good truck wash, that hand dry is that nice touch. Yeah. Now, um, with trying to keep the Black Widow clean and everything else, what are like some of the tips or tricks that, that you do, whether it's maybe the windshields or whatever it is, that, that makes it a little bit easier for you out here on the road? Uh, I actually, on most of my windows, I use bolt knot because uh, I feel like it's the best. But for a little, like for some odd reason, I just... Maybe it's that I'm not, you know, well, I'm a little bit more agile than you, but I just don't feel like climbing up to actually sit there and scrub the front with all the bugs. So I actually cheat and throw a little Dawn blue dish soap on the squeegee before I wipe the bull snot off. That gives it a little extra punch. Um, it, it does, and, and I use uh, well. And let's so for people who don't know what bull snot is, bull snot's a family of products done by Brown Ox, and it, 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 well, what we're talking about specifically is visible. You don't want to use bull snot on your windshield to be a little slimy. You want to use the visible, which is their glass cleaner, does a great job. Um, and we'll talk about a little bit about more about some of the different types of glass cleaners that are out there here in a little bit. Um, but is there anything else you want to talk about here real quick, Jess, before we go to break? we got about a minute. I think that it's my niece perfectly encapsulated what it was like to for a kid to go through 
the truck wash for the first time. So you remember the movie Shark Tale with Will Smith and Angelina Jolie? She calls the truck wash the whale wash. So every time I pull in now, I sing the the working at the whale wash and think of that every time I pull in to any truck wash. That's what it's like. You know, all the little guys running around scrubbing the big big fish. That, that act, you know, that's actually not a bad analogy. The, uh, we are going to take a break here. We'll be more with Table Trekking on, here on Keep On Talking Live. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Frontlane introduces Impulse, the world's first collision alert system for the driver behind you when you have to brake hard. <laughs> Impulse uses ultra-bright pulsing red LEDs to alert drivers behind you who might not be giving their full attention to the road. Using amazing accelerometer technology and a battery that will last for years, Impulse installs in minutes, fits nearly any vehicle, and never requires additional wiring. Drivers react 50% faster, helping to protect you and your passengers. Learn more by visiting www.frontlane.com slash impulse. That's www.frontlane.com slash impulse. Approved by all 50 states. Impulse by Frontlane. This blog is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Team driving with your spouse, is it for you? Trucking's an exciting career with many opportunities. Although there are many benefits to being a truck driver, such as freedom on the open road and seeing new places, there's still negative sides like loneliness and boredom. Truck driving is also difficult for your marriage. Being away from your spouse for days or weeks at a time makes it challenging to have a happy and healthy marriage. Thankfully, truck drivers have the option to team drive with their spouse. Forming a husband and wife trucking team can be a great opportunity to spend time together and travel the United States while making good money. Now, like any other job, driving with your spouse has pros and cons. Stay with me to find out if team driving with your spouse is right for you. Now, the pros of team driving with your spouse. Faster delivery. Due to the FMCSA's hours of service regulations, truck drivers can only drive up to 11 hours a day. Any driving after 11 hours will result in a penalty and a bad safety score. Truckers on average will drive up to 55, 60 miles an hour. After their 11-hour shift, that adds up to a little over 600 miles a day. When you drive with your spouse, you can drive more miles. While you're finishing your 11-hour shift, your spouse can be resting and getting ready for their shift. This allows drivers to complete more miles a day, which in return leads to a faster delivery. You won't feel lonely. Driving alone can lead to developing mental health issues later on in your trucking career. Studies show that depression and anxiety are some of the most common mental health issues in drivers today. Team driving with your spouse eliminates feeling lonely on the road. Having your spouse with you on the road gives you someone to talk to and enjoy your daily activities with. Make more money. A single truck driver makes less money per mile than one whose team drives. Why is that? Well, with two drivers, you're completing more miles each day, and therefore you reach your destination much quicker. Cons of team driving with your spouse. Difficulty getting along. They say that distance makes the heart grow fonder, and that's true. It can be difficult to get along with your spouse when you're in a small space for weeks at a time. You may find yourself wanting alone time to pursue your hobbies and interests. When you decide to team drive, you give up the possibility of any alone time in your truck. Lack of sleep. To make team driving work, your spouse will have to rest while you complete your shift of driving. Sleeping in a truck cab, especially if your spouse is noisy, can be difficult. As a truck driver, it's essential to have a good night's rest before hitting the road. Getting the right amount of sleep is not only good for your overall health, but it also makes you more alert and cautious when driving. Harder to find trucking insurance. If you decide that team driving is for you and your spouse, you might have trouble finding a commercial truck insurance company that will write your insurance. When you team drive, your truck never stops. Therefore, the truck is at risk for higher exposure to accidents. Your truck's also more liable to having maintenance issues, which can result in getting violations. Conclusion? Driving with your spouse has many pros and cons. Our advice to you is to take a look at the pros and cons and determine if this is the right career path for you and your spouse. Trucking with your spouse can lead to many great memories. This blog was brought to you by The Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net.
Truckers.net. Be sure to catch the Truckers Network radio show with your host, Shelly Johnson, weekdays at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern, right here on TNCRadio.live. The wash starts where we put degreaser on the, what do you want to call it, the more difficult areas of the truck. I, everybody knows that on a tractor, you've got an area that there's areas that are more um, susceptible to holding dirt, keeping dirt than other areas. So we, we pre-soak that. And then we actually use hand brushes on those areas. Once that's done, now in the meantime, we have the gantry going over the, the entire truck and trailer, putting down the first coat of the soaps and chemicals to break down the dirt and the enzyme, the uh, oxidation on the trailers and what have you. And it goes down one side, then comes back. It goes, it covers the truck completely on its one pass. On the second pass, it covers the truck with a second coat. Then it stops. There's a slight pause. Then the brushes start. We brush both the top and the sides. In the meantime, the worker is going around the truck, brushing the areas that are, are more difficult, but the brushes just, there's because of the contours on a tractor, they just don't get every spot. So we have to do those by hand. Um, and then it stops behind the truck, sprays the back of the cab, then it moves onto the trailer and it washes the top of the trailer and the sides. And the nice thing with this is when you can stand next to a trailer and you can look down the side, you can see the axle oxidation. You'll see along the side as, as, the, as it drips, as the, the water drains down the side, drips down to the floor, you can see a white, um, it's, it's the oxidation from the trailer. So not only does it clean it, but it, it, it helps with the oxidation on it. So it, it's really a pretty slick system. Um, you know, it, it doesn't get, it, it's not a detail, but it gives you probably 93%, 94% of detail quality on a wash. So and that's not bad. Um, no, it's, and, and here we, we operate three bays. Uh, we have two bays full time that are washing trucks and trailers and flatbeds and RVs and what have you. We have one bay that we put uh, our washouts in. Uh, washouts are a big part of our business. And when we get when we get to if we get out of balance where we have more washes than washouts, our third bay is equipped with a uh, with a gantry as well, so we can run these through. We run. When we're running full, we're running uh, anywhere from 12 to 13 trucks an hour uh, through there. That's actually so, pretty good. Actually, that's really good. Yeah, I mean, we can get it. We can get as high as 15, but you, but but all the stars have to align, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, but but realistically, it's 12 or 13 an hour between the three bays. So our um, wait times are less. Go ahead. Well, and, and I, I kind of can imagine that the wait times less. So I got a couple questions for you. Um, let's say sure. compared to doing things more the traditional way, you know, the hand brushing and the spraying, none of the automated equipment. How much quicker would you say you are? And also, how would you say you roughly compare on cost to some of the other companies out there? Um, we do a tractor trailer for seventy seven dollars. <laughs> We do a so tractor is, only for 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 fifty dollars. So I would say that we are dollars more. You get the tractor, the truck, and the trailer. Correct. That's yes, that's correct. That's actually a really yeah. good deal. Now, now the the trailer itself, the machine does ninety nine percent of the work. We brush, we put put acid on the acid or degreaser, depending if they're painted wheels, they get degreaser. If they're aluminum, they get acid. And we brush the wheels by hand. And But the rest of it, the brushes come down and they run down the side of the trailer. It's very little. There's very little manual labor to that. That's, one of the, that's the best part of this uh, system 
is that we, we don't have, we don't take the time. That's where things end up when you go to a, a blue beacon. You go there and everything is done sprayed. You've got sometimes four guys, sometimes six guys, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what their business plan or model is. But you've got guys physically going around your trailer. Um, yep. I'm guessing that those washes take 30 minutes a piece, 35 minutes. I'm not sure. Depends. Um, I mean, if they're really washes, good, it's less. But if they're not, it's yeah. about that. Well, you know, we're, we're like every other industry, Tom. Uh, labor is difficult to find. And, and this is a, it's, it's a, um, it's a hard job. It's not an easy job. Uh, we're very fortunate. We have a crew that has been with us since we started. Um, we have a core crew. We have a couple people that come and go, but we have a core crew that does a very good job on these trucks. Um, you know, Unfortunately, sometimes there's there's expectations. We don't meet everyone's expectation. You know, be it realistic or non-realistic, I, I don't know. But you know, it's it's difficult to wash a truck that hasn't been if the truck hasn't been washed for a six month period or whatever the time frame is. Ain't that it's a the difficult truth. wash? <laughs> it is. Well, and, you know, and actually. Steve, I'm going to interrupt you here just for a second. I want to make sure, sure. everybody realizes uh, we're talking with Steve from Lola's Truck Wash up here in Romeoville, Illinois. Uh, they've got an automated system that makes truck washing a little bit faster, a little bit easier. Uh, so it can get you out on the road a little bit faster. And as, and as you mentioned a little bit ago, the prices are as competitive, maybe even a little bit more so than some of their competitors. Hey, Bruce, I'm going to kick it over to you real quick here before we got to say goodbye to you. Do you got a question for Steve? Uh, <clears throat> everything I've heard. Uh, and you also have uh, hot wax. Which kind of wax do you use? We use it's it's a spray wax. It's a uh, it's it's like a Rainex product. It is not Rainex, but it is like that product. Um, okay. You can see a difference, and we can tell a difference. We have customers who come in uh, every week to ten days, and when you see their trucks come in, those are the trucks. I mean, <laughs> you know, selfishly, I love those trucks because it's it's not a hard wash, right? It's, right. Uh, it, it, and and when they they're using the wax on the tractor, it it's just that much easier to clean. And it's a okay. it's a product. We run specials. A tractor trailer with the with the wax is eighty dollars. So you're paying three dollars for wax. Um, okay. And it truly does make a difference. It. It keeps the truck, uh, it, it's easier to clean. Yeah, you can I, tell I a noticeable difference. It. I try to wax mine every time I wash it. Now, uh -huh. uh, behind the cab, uh, do you hand, you hand, you must have to hand wash that because we, you don't think your machine gets behind there. The machine does not. What we do, we have a, we have a, a, we use a degreaser. We spray the back, the entire back of the cab is sprayed before the gantry even starts. Okay. In most cases, our degreaser is a, between the degreaser and the pressure washer, it's enough to clean that well. If it's not, then we do brush it. We get up on the catwalk and, and, and brush it. But now, very seldom do we have to actually do that. Okay, because that's my biggest pet peeve. I always, it, they, it seems like they never get behind the cab very well. And I have the uh, aluminum wheels, and I guess they're called the, the Durabrite, the new wheels that came out mm -hmm. from the factory. Yes. yes. Where you don't have to polish them. And no. Then, and. We don't put acid on those wheels. We we and use a, we use the degreaser on those and a brush. Good, good. Because a lot of people forget to do them, and <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know how many we, times I pulled out to clean my windows and walked around, and 
went back inside and says, uh, I thought you did the front wheels. Well, we did. I said, well, come here. Let me show you something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess we didn't. Yeah. I've had, oh. I've had to take, I've had to take that walk of shame a couple times. <laughs> hey guys i'm gonna have to jump in here for a quick second we need to go to a break and bruce i want to say goodbye to you because we got some full lines here with some other people uh no, we are, are earlier no problem, to say Tom. goodbye to jess graham and appreciate you calling in as always jess same goes out to you uh steve if you can stay on for a couple more minutes i think i'm going to bring you on with somebody else here in the next break and we're going to be back right after these messages stay tuned for more That's right. I'm not. I'm not a spring chicken anymore. But hey, but I'm doing good. I went in for a uh, full physical yesterday, requirement by my insurance company, and the doctor was like, "Wow, you, you're doing good." So I was. I was glad. I was very happy to hear that. Well, good. Yeah. Yeah. Lost. Lost some weight. Blood looked good. So yeah, all good. Yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah, I also had a doctor appointment yesterday and went in, and you know, it was one of those appointments. You know bend over and cough and all the kids. Worst dentist ever. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jamie, how are, we, how are we looking out there on traffic? Uh, I think he had some updates for us while we were on break this week. For the latest in traffic, weather, and information, catch the Morning Grind weekdays on TNCRadio.live. Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher Cortman, and now for the Mental Health Minute. You know, everybody's always talking about stress, but very few people even know what it is. But before we get into that, permit me to tell you a story. Years ago, a good friend of mine, we'll call him Mike, because that's his name, received a gift certificate for free skydiving from his then fiance. Now, to me, nothing says I'll love you across the ages like here's a gift certificate to jump out of a perfectly good airplane at 12,000 feet. But Mike asked me if I wanted to go with him. And the way guys are, I said, oh, yeah, sure, skydiving, I'd love that, great. When inside, you know, I had lots of anxiety about jumping out of a plane. But we were told that we would have what's called tandem skydiving, which means there's an instructor strapped to your back. And so, therefore, it's safer because the instructor pulls the cord for the parachute. Now, I've had instructors on my back my entire life, so I thought this would be a great opportunity. So up we go, 12,000 feet in the air. And... It's March in Florida, so it would never occur to me that it would be absolutely freezing at that altitude. So my instructor straps on to me and says, we are the spotters. I don't know what that means. I found out that the spotter means we lean out of the airplane and find the spot where we're going to land. Well, that's nice, except that I was used as his windshield. And at 160 miles an hour, at 12,000 feet, my face was freezing. And he kept doing it. We kept leaning out of the plane. And finally, I said to him, just push me out of the plane. I don't care if we have a parachute or not. I can't take this anymore. I learned something about stress that particular day, not because of my experience, but because I was talking to some of the other people in the airplane and asked them, what are you doing up there? You know, I'm a psychologist. I can't help but interview people. And most of the people in the plane said, we do this every weekend to escape from stress. This is how we manage our stress. Let me explain to you a lot more about what stress is and what it isn't in the next Mental Health Minute. Hot Shots Secret presents Steve Summers' Overnight Drive nightly at midnight Eastern, 11 Central on TNCRadio.live or download the app.tncradio.live.
Counter of knowledge, we've got Steve with us from Lola's Truck Wash up in Romeoville, Illinois, who's called in to tell us a little bit of how they do a different, it's a few different things. We got a first time caller here, Judy. How are you doing tonight? I'm awesome. That's that's good to hear. So let, let's see. Do you have some questions for Steve here, real quick? Yes, I do. Do you offer or? Do you plan in the future maybe having somebody to detail the insides of the trucks? Actually, it's funny about that it. we actually do do that right now. We do detail services, but we do it right now. We're doing it by appointment only on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. um, what we're going to start doing, uh, we're working on it right now, is we are going to do where you get your wash, and then we do your interior. We're going to do it kind of like a full-service car wash type of thing. It'll be, we'll, you know, wipe the dashes down, clean the carpets, vacuum the car, not clean them, uh, vacuum the carpets, wipe the seats down. We'll, we'll clean the inside. It's not going to be a real detail. Um, the details we'll keep on an appointment-only type basis until we get more demand for and when we get more demand, then we'll start, you know, I would like to see us doing it because I have a fourth bay that we use for the details that is underutilized. So I would love to be able to do details full time. And that's that's where okay. we will head to. Okay. One other question. Are you sure. going to offer any kind of like hand waxes or something? Because there's a lot of show trucks up in the Chicago area. Yeah, there are. Um, you know, the sh uh, I mean, quite honestly, show trucks are not going to come to my facility. They're, they're leery of the, the gantry, even though there's no reason for them to be. The gantry is probably better than a hand brush. Um, it's softer. It's it, it has a way of reading. It measures the amount of pressure against the, the truck. So it, it, it never will burn the paint. It won't come into it. It won't. It's really a better system than a hand brush, actually. Um, there's just areas of the tractor that they can't get to, um, that the brush on the sides can't get to. So to answer that question, we would, we would have no problem doing show trucks and to do a hand wax. We would do that, but we would consider that as, as a detail and put that over into our detail bay. We would not put it in our wash bays. Okay. Because I know a lot of people, you know, they like to get their trucks wa waxed, you know, a real deep hand wax a couple times a year. And Sure. Yep. And and we do offer that service. We do we do, do that. Okay. Hey, Steve, I got I a question for you, for you real quick, if I can jump in here, Judy. Sure, Are you time. thinking about expanding? Standing at all? Or are you planning on just staying there up in the Chicago Romeoville area? You know, we've we've kind of kicked that around a little bit. Um, to to expand, you know, we're, we're we're working in our comfort zone right now. I guess this is the best way for me to to explain it. We do have some sites that we have uh, looked at, and we know that they're viable sites. Uh, they would still be in the northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin areas, and they're areas that we know need to be serviced. Um, so we are looking, to answer your question, we are considering it. We don't have, we don't have uh, a definite plan at this point, but we do, we, we, we are looking at it. We're looking at the viability of it. I, I know from the sounds of it, the, the, I mean, the Chicago land, Northern Illinois, Southern Wisconsin definitely needs more more services, um, truck washes, places like yours, et cetera. Uh, but I know, I, I think I speak for myself and some of the other Northeast drivers. We, you know, we consider moving a little further east too at some point. <laughs> I would, I would your real your real estate's a little too expensive up that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is that problem too, but that's that's a different conversation for later. Uh, hey, Judy, did you have another yes, question? Is. Did you have another question for Steve? Uh, what's the detailing usually cost? That's that's a big thing for a lot of drivers. Yeah, well, we we offer uh, a 
base um, interior for ninety nine dollars. Now, it will that gives you a two hour time period. We get some trucks. Uh, I'm going to be very blunt that are uh, more than two hours worth of work to get them cleaned up. So we go to, we go, we started out at $99 and then we go to $50 an hour after that. Um, so if it takes four hours, you're looking at $200, um, interior detail. Well, that's very reasonable because I could accomplish a lot in four hours while somebody's detailing my truck. Sure. Yep. So that's, I mean, that's, you know, that's the interior only. We do offer the, we do, we do the hand wax. We do the buffing. We do uh, wheel polishing. We, we do, we offer a lot of services and, and we're fairly, I, I believe that we're pretty reasonable. Um, uh, I, very. I don't particularly look at, uh, at what other people do. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of, I, I kind of live in my own little world there and we, we try to try to keep it that way. Um, you know, I don't really care what, what the guys do down the street. I care what happens inside my walls and make sure we try our best to, we try our best to satisfy the customer. I mean, uh, you know, we can't always meet every person's expectation. We try. There's just sometimes we can't, but, but we've 85 or 90% of the time we're, we're hitting the mark. So we're pretty proud of that too. Well, you, hey, be, um, you know, sometimes you just get a Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I know who she's talking about. So we're just going to leave it at that. <laughs> okay. I'm, gonna, I'm walking away from this conversation. Nope. That's saying a word. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'm going to okay. pull in Granny to say, save me for a second because I know she's got a question, so I can stop laughing. <laughs> Granny, what's your question? All right. Hi. I, um, okay, you had said, first of all, I'm a severe germaphobe, so I am like the biggest, uh, the B bad word, the bad B word for a lady when it comes to my truck being clean. And okay. I have noticed that a lot of these places, they just do the slop quick and wash. And if you go back in and say, wait a minute, check this out. Come look at what you left my truck. They get really rude. So I have heard about you and I have heard that you are the opposite. That I, And I want to say thank you for that. I have not been able to come to you myself, but mm -hmm. I have heard good things about you, your, your wash. But you had said that you're closed on Sunday. A lot of drivers come into the Chicago area on Sunday to deliver Monday and have the time. Have you ever thought of maybe doing a Sunday discount to get those drivers that are just sitting in a service plaza, sitting around doing nothing because they got there early on Sunday and they can't do anything till Monday? That may be mm -hmm. something that I'll come, I might drive out of the way for a good truck wash at a good price. Well, we have, we have thought about that. We, we tried to make a decision with, you know, I understand the business. I operate, I, I drove, I owned a trucking company with 125 trucks. I have, um, I owned parking areas where we had about 3000 trucks parking in there. Um, so I understand the business when I pretty well. That. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we do, we, it's all long-term monthly parking. It's not, uh, yeah, okay. it's not. And, and we sold that and we now operate it under Vantage truck parking. But, um, I, I'm very familiar with the needs of the drivers. And that's one of the reasons why we built this because there were the nearest one. There's one that's 45 miles away. And I spend a lot of time in the Janesville area, and I know we could really use one up in up in that area. My company happens to have a yard there, and so I I believe like my company would give you a contract for mm -hmm. our trucks that are run out of there. If there was one close. Uh, uh, that's one of the areas that we've very close to there. 
in between okay. in between uh, in between Beloit and Janesville. Okay, nice, uh, good area. You know, with all that crap on the roads, this fault, we could use it. Amen. Oh, yeah. hey, I got I got to jump in here real quick because we've got to take a break to get ready here for our final segment. Uh, we're going to be more. We'll be back with more right after this break. Stay tuned. Hope Savara here. Tune in every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on TNCRadio.live for my new show, The Driver Life Podcast. From your feet to the food you eat, from cellular health to how your cell phone affects your health, from how you move to improving your sleep. I believe it's the small, simple changes that lead to the big results in your life so that you can feel good again. We cover it all here on the Driver Life Podcast. Every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern on TNCRadio.live. Becoming a truck driver is not an easy task. You have to meet several requirements. After reviewing and meeting the requirements, you'll need to obtain a CDL, or a commercial driver's license, through the DMV in your state. To get your CDL, you must pass a knowledge and skills test. Many drivers attend a trucking school to help prepare them for the test. After successfully passing the CDL test, you now have your Class A CDL. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? Well, there's a little bit more to becoming a professional truck driver than just passing a few exams and getting your CDL. Trucking, as you may know, is not an easy career. It can be stressful, dangerous, lonely, and emotionally draining. Drivers need to make it a priority to become fully prepared for life on the road. Being prepared for life on the road can help avoid unnecessary mistakes and losses. Attending a trucking school is one way for drivers to prepare themselves for their new adventure. However, drivers don't always learn everything they need to be successful during their time at trucking school. Trucking schools will cover the basics for classroom instruction and in-driving modules, but new drivers need to learn more than just the basics. How do new drivers acquire the right training? The Truckers Network is proudly partnering with Advanced Pre-Employment Training, which is a training course for both professional drivers and trucking companies. Advanced Pre-Employment Training helps grow your industry knowledge by providing training courses on all the important topics for becoming a successful driver. These include pre-trip inspection, company representation, communication, document organization, bill of lading, refrigeration units, weight and axles, safety, and industry knowledge. Their focus points are to increase stability and growth in the business, eliminate mistakes and financial losses, maintain company safety ratings, and eliminate drivers and owner-operators quitting or losing their jobs. The Truckers Network members can now save 5% off advanced pre-employment training courses by using our exclusive promo code. Become a member today of the Truckers Network and save instantly on the industry's best products and services. Visit the Truckers Network website at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. That's app.thetruckersnetwork.net. TNCRadio.live, your commercial driver navigation station. And we're back with Keep On Talking Live. I'm Tom Kirk, and we've had some hot conversation tonight, some cold coffee and some lousy apple pie or something like that. Hope you've enjoyed the conversation. We've been talking with Steve from Lola's Truck Wash up in Romeoville, Illinois. Thank you for calling in, Steve. We've had a whole bunch of callers tonight uh, talking a little bit about trucks, asking Steve questions, things like that. Uh, we said goodbye to Judy and Granny during the break. One of the questions that did or points that did get brought up is there is some uh, paid park, truck parking uh, basically across the street from Lola's over at Thornton's. Uh, so that is, you know, if you're looking for a place to park after you get your truck washed, that is an option. Hey, Steve, before I forget, why don't we tell everybody where they are, how they can find you? All right. Lola's Truck Wash is located at 1331 North Independence Boulevard, and that's in Romeoville, Illinois. We're on the corner of Independence Boulevard and Route 53, which is Bolingbrook Drive there. And um, that's where we're at. Excellent. We're about a mile south of I-55. 
that that's a that's a good area. And that Thornton's truck stop actually has some pretty good food. I haven't eaten at that specific one, but I know Thornton's is usually pretty decent in general for some, some of that. Hey, Christine, let's come to you next. And we're going to come to Catwoman because you've you've been waiting here about the longest of anybody. How are you doing tonight, young lady? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm hanging down in Houston. Aha, the lovely Houston area. Do you have any questions or, or um, uh, for Steve or any comments on what we've been talking about tonight? Uh, you know, I have not frequented his truck stop or his tank wash. I'm sorry, his wash. I'm sorry. Um, because, you know, what I carry, I don't frequent washes. When I do, I'm usually bobtail and I only frequent one. Sorry, sir. And I'm usually in Duncan, South Carolina. Um, wow. And it is a streaked beacon, unfortunately, but they do a good job. Well, that's, you know what? If you have a place that you like to go, that's that's what it's all about. So that's it's, how yeah. you try to build your loyalty by it. I do. It's the only one I'd ever go to. Um, yeah. And I'm not up in, when I'm up in Illinois, I'm usually over on Calumet, over in the Calumet area, never over mm-hmm. in the Joliet area or anywhere over off of 55. Right. So I'd be I'd be willing to try, but I'm never really over in that area. So uh, it's a. Well, if you ever do get over in that area, we'll certainly be glad to do your truck for you. Well, thank you very much. I, I If I got over there, I would. Um, good, good. I don't know what Batwoman. I don't know what uh, Batwoman is up to. Where she's Cat, hanging? Catwoman. How, how are you doing there Catwoman. tonight, Catwoman? Good, good. I hope everyone's doing well. well I, I know I am. Good night. So. It has been. It's been, I think, some fun, too. So uh, do you have any questions for Steve or comments or suggestions for uh, keeping the truck clean and making life a little bit easier out there on the road? Uh, no, I don't have any questions for him. I'm not familiar with his service, but it, if I had a truck, still had a truck of our own, I'd probably be very interested in it. Um, but real quick, uh, on our windshields, I was a big fan of just using or- orange spray and uh, spraying the windshields down, let it sit for a minute, took all the bugs off of Texas and Florida in like a few minutes. And yeah. uh, just give it a quick rinse. But as far as uh, the truck detail or cleaning, um, I'd have to stick with our local Kester's uh, body and truck frame down in uh, New Haven, Indiana. Uh, when we bought our 2001 Pete, a 379, we got it from one owner in Arkansas, and it, uh, the paint, the red paint, had turned, you know, the pinkish with the orangish looking kind of color to it all faded <laughs> off. And we thought we were going to have to paint the whole entire thing because this was all original equipment, even interiors, all immaculate except for the paint. And we took it to them, they went over it head and toe did what they needed to, and then send it off to the detail shop when they brought it back out. My God, it looked like it came off the showroom floor. It was wow. cherry red and so bright. Absolutely stunning. And uh, like I said, I would have to stick with them. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. We've come around the corner and see that. It's really beautiful. Yeah. That so I, uh, we wouldn't take it to anyone else. I mean, those, those guys did a fantastic job down there. So well, um, yeah, we always stuck with them. Something I want to jump in, Catwoman, that you reminded me of. Thank you. Because I, I, I said we uh, would do this when we came back at the end, uh, when we took the break there at the first hour. Another product that I found mm-hmm. I like for cleaning windshields, we've talked about the visible. Great product. There's only one complaint I have about it. It's got about a 12 to 18, 18 inch range. So if you're kind of, uh-huh. well, chunky like myself and not as flexible as I once was, trying to climb up on the tires to spray the windshield is, well, an adventure let's just put it that way and coming back down is amusing for everybody else um was it the orange i'm oh, sorry go ahead so i actually have started using motor coats reach spray it's a window cleaner as well but that's mm-hmm, got a right. range of about, about six to nine feet so i can stand on mm-hmm. the ground go to the front of the truck spray the entire windshield wait a minute or so wipe it off um mm-hmm. you know with with the script part of the squeegee squeegee it off but it's actually designed so you can flip the mm-hmm. windshield and do it wipers and do it that way yeah. but that's a product mm-hmm. that i like and for the windshield yes, for the like windshield, that that's the one i swear mm-hmm. by for everything else particularly the interiors i do like that visible product it works real well that i know just Graham was talking about so i you know and like you mm-hmm. said the the orange thing i've used that some in the past so it's finding that thing that, yeah, that has good that is good range also 
Yeah. So, yeah, it was actually motor coat and the orange. We'd carry both of those with us, but it would be either one of those that we would use. But the orange spray, we'd have to stop sometimes with the bugs in Texas and Florida. Almost seemed like every hour or less that we had to stop. You know how the bugs would get. I mean, as soon as you clean them exactly. off, they're right back. So, you right. know, the orange spray was kind of economical for that to do it quickly, you know. And then uh, when we stopped at night, then we used uh, the good cleaner, the motor coat. Oh. Exactly. And it's getting actually kind of where we got to start wrapping things up. Hey, Steve, I really appreciate you coming in tonight for all of our callers tonight. Too many to mention. Thank you, Christine uh, Catwoman. Thank you for sticking it out here to the, to the bitter end. It's really appreciated. Steve, I want to give you one last chance to tell everybody where they can find you. Well, it's Lola's Truck Wash, and we're located at 1331 North Independence Boulevard in Romeoville, Illinois. We're at the corner of Route 53 and Joliet Road, which is also Independence Boulevard, uh, right there in Romeoville, across the street from Thornton's. Um, it's a, a nice area there. It, it really is. To stay, it's also safe. Excellent. And we've got to wrap things up here for tonight. Flows flashing the lights at me, telling me it's time to get out of the diner away from the counter. Uh, so we appreciate everyone for calling in tonight. Stay tuned. We got taillights with the bombs. They're going to be talking a few different topics tonight, including that new show that will be coming up here soon on TNC Radio, House of the Driver. Uh, and then after the uh, taillights with the bombs, we've got Clutch Time Sports with Anderson and Baker. Great sports show with more of a drive focus so stay tuned we're going to have some great programming tonight see you here next week uh, on keep on talking live the counter of knowledge is now closed see you next week folks thanks tom Great leaders challenge their people not to stop at the first right answer. Tighten the Lug Nuts is the book that will help you move past that first right answer to be more effective, more productive, and more successful. This book serves as a blueprint that can be easily applied by leaders, entrepreneurs, truckers, owner-operators, all of us in our everyday lives. This is one of the best leadership books you can read to help you accelerate towards your personal and professional goals. Plus, a portion of the proceeds will be donated to truckerschristmasgroup.org. Visit TightenTheLugNuts.com to order your copy today. You're listening to TNC Radio.live, Houston, Texas. This station is owned and up. 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 